Okay. Yeah, it'd be nice if I could keep the, the music playing, but the but the law, the law is the law is there to protect us, right? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of mood am I in this morning? I don't know. Good. Typical though, you know. Seeing what the hell is going on in this world. This world is crazy and getting crazier. It's Tuesday, the 26th of April. And um, what you heard me listening to that I took off was Delicate Steve, Wonder Visions. Do you know this musician? I had the great opportunity about 10 years ago to play a couple of shows opening for him. His band when they were on tour and came through. Came through twice. And we bonded. Uh, I just heard from him last night out of the blue. And um, Steve, if you happen to catch this... Um, very kind of you to get a hold of me. He said that I inspired him. Who knew, you know? Um, it was just a, me being me, and you know, when I uh, play music, especially when I play music and it's a good night, and you're sharing that energy, it's just intoxicating. And I wax philosophical, I do, because it means a lot to me. And I think it's extremely important. The creative process and the sharing of the uh, creative process. Making music, making art, dancing together. Team activities can be real soul building. But um, organized sports, um, I don't include in the same way because it's because of the focus of it, which is com competition. It has its own benefits, excuse me, as an endeavor, but not mine. So that was pretty cool. Still, Steve Marion is his name. It's a guitarist whose style is kind of, um, in, it's interesting. I can see why, um, for a while, he was on David Burns' Luwaka Bop label. There's um, a bit of an island, undefined island sort of feel, rhythmically, to the way that he plays. And he also, yeah, it's it's an interesting style. I, I um, thought I'd share that. rambling a little bit, and that's okay, because uh, I'm in the here and the now. I'm in the here and the now, and that's how I keep my head straight. I'm not losing my mind over the fact that a multi-billionaire, Elon Musk, is so rich that he can do whatever he wants, and that's what we see him doing. I will comment that I just find it interesting that, and I'm I maybe I don't quite understand, but I think I do. But I don't see how people getting all upset and deciding they're going to stop using Twitter is going to affect his fortunes at all. And then also people worrying about the nature of Twitter changing drastically suddenly. Well, let's see what happens. Of course, if you follow me, you know what I just. You know what I'm saying on Twitter and on uh, Facebook. Elon Musk and his ilk give no fucks about any of us. The super rich will never do the right thing. Okay? I've been watching this all my life. They ain't going to do anything for the common man. It's all about them. We might get a little something out of it because maybe we got a job, but they don't give no fucks about us. None. Musically, I pulled this. I'd been talking about mini pops, so I got that reissue of their uh, album, Sparks in the Dark Room. Well, I've had this since it came out, the uh, infamous Factory single. 
Dolphin Spurt and Goddess, where they um, do a pastiche of the Philips lo logo because the guys are Dutch. And that's Philips is a Dutch company. You know, a quick strange aside, if I were to pay too much attention to history, I would hate a lot of people. Thinking about the history of the Dutch um, made me uh, bring it up. And so it's like I stay in the here and now, you know, I'm much more interested in finding ways of being connected to people because we are, rather than always pointing out mess. Musically, Terry down in Australia, good to see that you're, you're back and I hope you had a, did you say you were on vacation? Funny, he said that, you know, McLaughlin tied in with him and just the last couple of days, the last documentaries that I had finished watching were on Australian bands. One being uh, Dragon, interesting. Uh, baby animals, I remember them, the hit, and the angels. I remember the angels in particular because my second band, Full Clip, we covered the angels. Take a long line. Who else in fucking Omaha, Nebraska even? Well, actually, it was an FM minor uh, rock hit. So we were hearing the angels over here in my area. That's a killer song. And the lead singer, very intense with his eyes, kind of reminds me a bit of Jazz of Killing Joke. His manic, um, when he would get manic with his performance and his eyes would get very intense, like Jazz Coleman. Pretty cool band. And um, I was just uh, really um, enjoying how... The perspective, you know, from Austra the Australian musicians when they had an opportunity to make it big overseas, and they just went for it, you know, and just went for it, you know. Um, so nice that you're around, Terry. The other thing that I was watching, which will lead to me showing this in a couple of records, is, excuse me watching a couple of prod podcasts with Richard Barbieri who first came to prominence in the band Japan and then and now he's and then Porcupine Tree a very modest man but a great artist I love that he is so um, down to earth and honest about who he is, how he got to where he is, and what he can do. Because he's not a keyboardist. He's not a keyboardist. That's what he plays, but he's a sound crafter. This is his latest solo album, Under a Spell. And it was great to hear him talk about this album. Because it is very dreamlike. I got the red vinyl version. One of the few times where I did a pre-order. I don't like to pre-order. It's like I had to, I really wanted this, the uh, special version. This album is jazzy and dreamlike. And I loved hearing him talk about his process. How he would set up different modules. To just start to start activating. And then he would sit back and watch and see what happens if anything and if something develops then he would follow that or the, how he would use sound whether he's not a songwriter he composes through sound mainly this album of his is a very good example of that Things Buried Richard Barbieri Things Buried this came out I think in 2004 originally and this is very, like the cover there, it's kind of undefined. I don't know what that is, but it's intriguing. You know, and it's like something that's just out of focus. It almost looks mechanical. It almost, it's like you're not sure. 
and this music is um, like that, not easily defined, but it's definitely a place of its own, and the sounds really define what's going on here. Really wonderful, intriguing sounds. Richard Barbieri, as I've said before, I'm so happy that I crossed over from being just a fanboy with him when he got contacted me after buying some of my music. And uh, we've corresponded a little, just a little bit, but it's so meaningful to me. Y'all know how that is, don't you? Just like when I hear from you folks. The, someone just shared with me that um, they met Steve Swallow, Carla Blaze's husband. Very cool. That'd be nice. I've been to that store that you were talking about, as a matter of fact. Mm. So, what's on my plate today? Nothing. And sometimes that's good. It's a, a little cool. It's time to get to, to the yard. I've picked at it, but today... I should make sure, because if it gets up higher than 50, I'll get out in the yard today and start. But, um, yeah, I might, you know, tomorrow and the rest of the week is getting more like in the 60s. So, uh, it's time for yard work. It is. chemicals get back to work tomorrow um, not the full complement but um, enough people are around that we can get back to work on constructing a set so we can we can get out there and start playing of course we're not hurrying but at the same time I can say we the band we are excited about being going again hmm So again, I just I just wing this, okay? I'm not doing Patreon, and I'm not none of that shit. I'm just get on here and talk to you, you know. And um, I do realize that a lot of folks really like the videos, like to see what's going on on a daily basis. And so that's uh, part of what got me to turn the camera on today, because as you can see, I'm kind of like just rambling, you know. And um, is it within grabbing right quick? Here's it, you know, I um, it was nice to hear from some folks from Brazil yesterday. And uh, here's a Tom Zay album. I have um, more um, of his music digitally. You're absolutely right. Tom Zay is quite a unique fabrication defect. Topical, political, mus musically charged up. I first heard of Tom Zay back in the No New York days when the Brian Eno No New York album came out. And the Z label, it was interesting. The Z label started out in New York. And they had stuff like, um, oh, I think it was where DNA, and they had a Tom Zay album, or record, 45. I bought it when it first came out. I don't have it anymore. Sorry to say. But I love the Brazilian people, and it's like, I've got many different artists, from Quarteto MC to Toninho Horta, Elmeto Pascual, uh, of course, Milton Nascimento. Maria Betania, I could go on because I can't remember all the names. I love people, but I love the Brazilian people and the music. I do. I love everyone, actually. I do. Even, even Russians. I have Russian friends, and I don't hold it against them about this fool fucking Putin. He's in the same boat to me as Elon Musk. He's got too much money. Too much power, so he can do whatever he wants. Well, I, I would blow up Ukraine. It ain't funny. Shit pisses me off. 
So that's the other thing I'll say is if you're a new viewer, you know, I'm not politically correct, don't care about offending you. I talk about what my experience is, and I know that the basic place I'm coming from is one of humanity. I care about everybody, okay? So I'm not spending, spreading any negative energy here. When I get a when I get a bit abrasive or caustic, or <clears throat> it's because it's how I'm feeling, and it, I have a right to express it. And a lot of it is righteous anger. It is. It's righteous. It's like you know. This is. You know, see, I can go on. Okay, you ready for a poll? Yeah, I'm gonna go up here. Let's go up here. Let's go up here. Don't look there. Don't look. They're all stuck together, but don't look. What do we got? Fantasy. Paint a picture. This is a reissue of this progressive rock album from the 70s that I had been after for a long time. Originals are very, very pricey. This is a hit and miss affair of an album. Please excuse me. One of the features of the album has always been the artwork. I really like that cover. Paint a picture. The band attempts to live up to this art. They do. Their second album, Beyond the Beyond, hits closer to the mark than this one. <coughs> but I quite like this album, although it's not one I'm, you know, lis listening to a lot. But this is definitely the sort of thing I like to have in my collection. Fantasy. Paint a picture. Yeah, that's a cool cover. Sort of like, you know, I'm not quite sure what I was trying to show you. It's a fantasy. <clears throat> okay. Here we have something slightly obscure that I haven't played in a while. Electro Surrealistic Landscapes. This is by Barton McLean and Priscilla McLean. And this is on the Opus One label. Some of you may be aware of that label. It's like uh, contemporary CRI. One of those, those kind of, um, they almost seem like they're kind of academic labels. Maybe they are. It seem like they're associated with some school or something like that. This I'll have to play. I can't describe it, but as, as you can see, it's it's it involves electronics, and um, this is not going to be song oriented. Glad I pulled this. This gets played, so I can refresh myself. The fact that I have it means that it's 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 good. What they attempt here is good. The McLeans. I love stuff like that. I really do. What's going on with you people? Feeling real regular today. Feeling real good. Feeling real solid. Real solid. And um, uh, that's, we know what that stuff is. What about right there? What about right there? Pat Martino, bless his soul. This is uh, one of my younger brothers. Is this was this in his collection? Yeah. You know, this was left behind by my younger brother who um, left us last year. Pat Martino, his story is amazing. Where I think what he had a heart attack or a stroke, and he um, forgot who he was and everything, and over time got it all back and had to reteach himself how to play guitar. And got his facility back. If you haven't heard Pat Martino, he's a guitarist. Guitarist. You jazzers know what I'm talking about, right? Pat Martino is one of the super greats. His phrasing, his melodicism, his ability to dance through ch changes. And play so beautifully melodically when he's playing 
solos is just he's one of the best Pat Martino okay we're going over here what did I get David Sanchez keyboardist some of you folks know him probably best he was with Bruce Springsteen for a while he's played with a lot of people though and he first came to my attention with his solo albums uh, David Sanchez and Tone doing a prog fusion thing it's great he also played with uh, Peter Gabriel and this is a uh, kind of a solo album that I actually am not that familiar with I got it used and I have maybe played this once or twice so once again it goes in the to play pile good musician though good musician very proggy very proggy very proggy okay let me go one more here straight straight back Uzme Doma. Uzme Doma. I believe these folks are from Poland, yes. Progressive rock from Poland. They um, are very much in the tradition of Frank Zappa and Mother's of Invention. They've um, performed with the residents when the residents came to Poland. I was very fortunate that to get to see them when they came on one of their American tours. They were just excellent and uh, very musical, very eclectic. Uh, the music moves and changes a lot. The cover is 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 very descriptive of the music. It's very unique sound. Good stuff. Man, it's like I feel like I've hardly said anything and it's been 22 minutes, so I think I better just go ahead and just chill out and let you all go for now. But this is my um, hello for, for hello to everyone on a Tuesday. You all take care.